Hello, I'm Dr. Benita Rattan. I'm a doctor, but also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of color. So today's video is an interesting one. It's a question you've asked me over and over again. Dr. V, what's the difference between protein powder and collagen powder? Aren't they all protein? Can they be used interchangeably? And so today's video is all about addressing this question. And do you even need to drink a collagen powder or a protein powder? Can you get enough from your food? Uh, plus, I want to discuss the mistakes that get made when it comes to collagen. So if that sounds good to you, give me a thumbs up. Let's dive right in. As you know, this is a non-sponsored channel. That means all the information you receive on this channel is evidence-based. And if you love evidence-based information, don't forget to get your hands on a copy of Skin Revolution, a book that I've written uh, with HarperCollins, available from Amazon, online, um, and it gives you everything, including product recommendations that are, again, non-sponsored. Right, so uh, why is collagen important for the body? Collagen is the most abundant protein in the body. It's made up of two amino acids, the most abundant being proline and glycine. Collagen is essential for your bones, your joints, your tendons, your skin, your hair, and your nails. So we actually lose collagen with age. So from 21 years old onwards, we lose 1% collagen every year. And then after menopause, you lose 30% collagen in those first five years. It's, you know, collagen literally just drops off a cliff and that affects everything. So you may actually be, you know, slowly seeing, you know, more fine lines, wrinkles, uh, aching joints, etc. gently until you get to menopause. And then suddenly everything, you know, declines very rapidly. And that's one of the main reasons why. So how do you tackle this? First of all, you want to stop breakdown or premature breakdown of collagen. And you also want to stimulate collagen production. So you want to do that simultaneously. So number one, you want to reduce the amount of free radicals being generated in your skin. Free radicals create an oxidative stress on the skin and then lead to collagen breakdown. So this means that you want to clean your skin, uh, especially if you live in a polluted area. If you live in the city or towns around pollution, make sure you double cleanse at night. You wanna make sure you're wearing an SPF 50, broad spectrum SPF 50 during the day with some antioxidants in it too. So what happens is when UVA rays hit the skin, it generates free radicals. That leads to aging and cancer. So this is the one that I use. This is our Dr. V in Zincable. It's a mineral-based sunscreen specifically for skin of color. So mineral, I prefer mineral over chemical for skin of color just because it's anti-inflammatory. And plus in here we put in Melashield, which basically helps with hyperpigmentation during the day. It's broad spectrum. So it um, protects you from UVA and UVB rays and it's SPF 50. Plus it's a primer, so I'm using it now, right now under my makeup and it just allows your foundation to go on very smoothly and there's no white cast with it, which is obviously very important. Whichever SPF 50 you want to wear, that's fine. Um, but this just happens to be the one that I wear, the one that I made specifically for skin of color. You also want to reduce sugar intake because when you eat sugar, glycation happens and this also destroys your collagen. Plus you want to minimize denatured alcohol in your skincare, especially if it's high up in the ingredients list because denatured alcohol, which can be found in creams, it can be found in serums, it can be found in your foundation, also generates free radicals in the skin. So we wanna minimize this. So let's minimize destruction first before we think about um, stimulating more collagen. So products that you want to have in your skincare would be an antioxidant serum. So your antioxidant serum, there's some things I want you to look for. Number one, it must be an airless packaging because it's an antioxidant serum, which means it oxidizes in oxygen. So you don't want a pipette vitamin C or a pipette any antioxidant. Uh, number two, they should be in combination. So you don't wanna just buy a vitamin C product. You would wanna have in there your vitamin C, your vitamin A, your vitamin E, uh, coenzyme Q10, maybe green tea extract, maybe ferulic acid. You want a combination of antioxidants together to stabilize it. So make sure when you have a look at your skincare now, if you have a vitamin C in a dropper, it's, it's probably oxidized and it's you know, dead on arrival if you want. And um, it's just not worth your money or your time. You want an antioxidant serum, which has been well preserved. That means an airless pump, 
and in combination. So this is the one I use, our Dr. B Antioxidant Power Serum. So I want you to see what an airless pump looks like. This one airless pump looks like, and you should be able to see holes at the bottom. So basically every time you pump, the oxygen leaves, and so the product inside is preserved. So in here, it's a gel-based antioxidant serum. Um, and we've got retinaldehyde, which 0.1%, which works 11 times faster than retinol, plus I've put in 0.1% retinol, plus your vitamin C, your vitamin E, and your coenzyme Q10. So I've put them in combination. So I've done a whole video for you on what to look for in an antioxidant serum, and I've uh, given you non-sponsored uh, products that I love that you can buy over the counter as well. So just make sure you purchase the right antioxidant serum for your skin. You also want peptides in your skincare. So peptides, so this is one that I use, our Serapep Brightening Moisturizer. Whichever one you, you want to use is fine. So this is what it looks like. And peptides also help to stimulate collagen. So it's another thing that you want to be using topically. So the key things I want you to use on your face would be your antioxidant serum, your peptides, uh, your SPF 50, and then in your antioxidant serum, ideally you want a vitamin A and a vitamin C. So the next question I get asked is, Dr. B, can't we just get our collagen from food? So the main amino acids are glycine and proline, and those aren't found in the food that we tend to eat. Previously, you know, our ancestors would chew on bones and bone marrow and ligaments and organs, i.e. where the connective tissue is, the skin. Now we tend to eat chicken breast, ground beef, uh, or mince, or fillet of fish. So these aren't the areas where you find collagen. So unless you're chewing on ligaments and tendons of um, animals, you, you aren't going to really have enough glycine or proline. You need 10 grams of glycine per day to synthesize new collagen and we only produce about three grams of glycine. The next question I get asked is, Dr. V, what's the difference between protein powder and collagen powder? Isn't it all protein? Well, here's the difference. The nutrient profile is different. So you may have heard that protein powder is a complete powder, it's a complete protein, and collagen is an incomplete protein, which is correct. But the thing is, the composition of collagen powder has much higher profile of proline and glycine compared to protein powder. And proline and glycine are essential for your hair, skin, nails, and joints. So these two different powders have two different outcomes. And so it depends on what your goal is. So if you're trying to build muscle mass, you want a protein that's got your branch chain amino acids, such as leucine, isoleucine, valine. It's good for muscle protein synthesis and repair of muscle. Also, if you're a vegan or a vegetarian, there are plenty of vegan options when it comes to protein powders. However, if your goal is for your hair, skin, nails, joints, and bones, then opt for collagen. A 24-week study on athletes found that those who took collagen supplements had less severe pain, joint pain, than those who didn't. And another study showed that women who took collagen had better bone mineral density than those who didn't, i.e. the amount of bone mineral in bone tissue compared to those who only took calcium. So in summary, if you're looking for increased muscle mass, opt for protein powder. If you're looking for your hair, skin and nails and joints, then opt for your collagen. And when you look for your collagen, the things I want you to look for are eight grams of marine collagen. So marine collagen has the highest bioavailability. Vast majority of collagens aren't don't have enough grams of protein in it and so a tablet for example if you weigh it on a weighing scale it's only going to be about one gram and you need eight grams so unless you're taking eight tablets tablets and collagen shouldn't really go together it's not worth your time so so avoid that save your money and that's a you know huge marketing gimmick so you want to look for eight grams of marine collagen plus you want vitamin c in your collagen drink because you need vitamin c in order to synthesize collagen there's no point in drinking the collagen you've got the amino acids your fibroblasts have been triggered but now you don't have the vitamin C in order to manufacture more collagen. So you want that. Number three, you want hyaluronic acid really in your collagen drink as well. It's a humectant, so it holds water in that top layer of skin, it plumps up your skin immediately. If you have hyperpigmentation, you should look for copper in your uh, collagen drink too. And if you have skin of color and you live in a cold country, I want you to look for vitamin D in your collagen drink too, because low vitamin D equals low mood and bone pain. So this is the one I have. This is Dr. B Collagen Boost. It has everything you need in it. So if you look at the back, you can actually see all of the 
additional vitamins and minerals in your collagen boost. So whichever one you want to use is fine, just make sure you have the, that profile. I'm in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single video. I know one question that's gonna be asked is, Dr. V, what if you are vegetarian or vegan and you want to take collagen? Collagen only comes from animals. It's in the connective tissues. It cannot be found in plants. Protein and branch chain amino acids can be found from pea protein and um, other plant proteins. But when you get told that, oh, this is a vegetarian collagen, that's incorrect. It's completely incorrect because it cannot exist. And I want you to be aware of that because fake marketing exists everywhere. Um, and I want you to be empowered with that knowledge. Don't forget, I am in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single video. So please do come, hit that notification bell, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when to come. I'm also on Instagram. I help a lot on skincare there. So Dr. Mita Rattan and Skincare by Dr. V. Also, if you just want quick bite-sized skincare information, you can follow me on TikTok. Uh, and also, if you want to go more into depth about your skincare journey and you want help from our global skin and color family, please do join our private Facebook group called Dr. V Sock Family. It's a wonderful place. You can share your photos and you get feedback and other people going through similar experiences. So it's a wonderful place. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.